Hi everyone, this is uh, Ryan from uh, Blockchain Markets. Uh, welcome everyone. And today uh, I'm with uh, Kida Che, founder at Universal Labs. Uh, welcome, Kida. Uh, hi, Ryan. Yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. <laughs> um, so today we're going to have a, a conversation about uh, uh, Universal Labs. Um, it's a very early, early stage uh, um, uh, project. Uh, so I'm really excited to to know everything about it from uh, from uh, Kida. Um, but first, uh, for people that don't know you, Kida, if you can uh, give us a bit of a, a background on um, on on yourself. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm the founder and the CEO of Universal Labs. So I was born in China, uh, but I spent eight years in the United States. So I got my bachelor degree and master degree both from United States. So uh, I started at Harvard for my master's degree uh, in computer science. Uh, and uh, also I got a bachelor degree in pure mathematics and economics from the Ohio State University. So uh, I worked for the first blockchain research lab uh, at Harvard. So uh, this lab was co-sponsored by Harvard, uh, City, Fidelity, and the Ethereum Foundation. So this lab, you know, like the goal of this lab was to of uh, figuring out the potential uh, use case of the applications of blockchain technology in financial industry. So especially for Wall Street, you know, giants. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, this lab was founded in uh, 2015 and it was very lucky. So I was selected from uh, 400 students, applicants. There was uh, well, uh, uh, this like 20 uh, students to be the researcher of this lab. So during this lab, I did a lot of research of the blockchain technology, and also I uh, created uh, several prototypes uh, for the like blockchain applications. Uh, and after that, you know, I think you know uh, it's uh, in the uh, end of the 2015. I think that the blockchain will be the next big thing, like like you know, because I was born in uh, you know uh, in the late uh, 1990s, so I didn't have a chance to uh, you know. Uh, create something or do something really cool for the internet. You know, it, it, you know, I'm you know too young for that. But I think blockchain is a technology I should, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, to try. Uh, you know, especially you know uh, my age and after my education. You know, all these things together, I think is a big opportunity. Uh, so I uh, founded a company called Ownership Technology in 2015, and this uh, uh, we use blockchain technology to protect the intellectual property. Uh, it's especially for designs. So a lot of designers, they have a lot of cool designs, but some uh, designers copy each other. And uh, when they copy, they, they won't uh, uh, apply for a patent because it's very expensive and uh, take a lot of time. So they need some other methods or tools to protect the ideas. So we provide them this tool to let them to use blockchain to generate a, a proof of uh, existence, you know, proof of uh, certificate uh, for them to show this is my uh, design. And if someone copy, uh, then I can, you know, uh, maybe I can use this as a proof. So, uh, and this, uh, this company was uh, invested by uh, Boost VC. You know, it's, uh, it's a very famous uh, blockchain VC in Silicon Valley. They invested to Coinbase and my East Wallet, you know, a lot of big names. And also, uh, uh, we uh, we got investment from uh, Sanjeev Maha, the once chairman and uh, partner at Goldman Sachs. So uh, yeah, this is uh, this was my first blockchain startup. And then in 2016, so I moved from Silicon Valley to China, and uh, also uh, you know we changed our direction a little bit. So we pivoted a little bit. So we moved from the intellectual property protection to uh, supply chain management with blockchain because. You know, we think that in Chinese, the Chinese market, they, this has a huge potential because a lot of counterfeits, you know, big products in China. Yeah. So uh, we try to solve that problem. Then we made uh, uh, the first uh, blockchain-based uh, supply chain tracking solution. Uh, you know, we, uh, and uh, we provided the consulting services to Alibaba, Baidu, Hainan Airlines, these big companies. So. Uh, yeah, and we successfully sold our solution by the end of the 2017. So we sold this, the whole solution to a, a big company. And uh, then we started to work on the Universal Labs idea, you know, 
So, and now uh, we are doing, we are creating the first decentralized personal cloud, the UV box. So this yeah. is the UV box in my hand. So <laughs> yeah, very yeah, interesting. That's all. Yeah, we'll get yeah. to uh, we get to the, uh, talk the, the specific on on, the, uh, on that because I think it's it's worth uh, spending some time to talk about in in depth about it. I think it's a very interesting concept. So uh, yeah, you've got a very uh, impressive uh, background, both from the academic but also from the uh, uh, entrepreneurial side of things, like doing really uh, things. So you uh, for Everybody that is watching that, I think it's also very interesting to know that in some projects they have very uh, academic, they're very strongly uh, and academic wise, but they don't have the real world uh, experience. And then in this case, you have proved, uh, you have shown that not you can just only um, uh, offer to uh, your products to big companies, uh, and so they they are able to use them, but you also uh, able to raise capital. Uh, it's very impressive. Um, um, so, um, if you can, you can tell us well, but right, just right before we start with the uh, Universal Labs, I think it's very interesting for the community also to to know uh, and the experience when you talked about um, uh, that solution that you were offering in, in supply chain for uh, Alibaba uh, mm -hmm. and Baidu, it's, uh, because uh, I think that's a perfect uh, it's a perfect uh, use case for, for blockchain. Um, so they can track everything. And Alibaba is, of course, uh, is one of the biggest uh, worldwide. So how would they use it? Would they use like uh, to, to track their products that uh, uh, merchants in Alibaba would send abroad so they could tra track the, uh, where it was and what, what point? Which... Yeah, so, uh, so uh, for, the, for Alibaba, so they have, uh, you know, like they have this uh, website called uh, Taobao. So it's like uh, the Chinese version of the eBay, you know. So uh, we, so on on top of their platform, there are a lot of fake products uh, because, like uh, you know, like uh, they. So sometimes when a, cons a, big, a consumer buy something from Taobao, they won't buy. They will. They will have this question in mind. Okay, is this a, a real or uh, fake product? Yeah. So you will, it's uh, it's very tricky. Sometimes yeah. you get a real product. Sometimes you get a fake one <laughs> from the same seller. So it's, uh, it's hard to tell. So then Alibaba think, okay, it's not good. We need to do something. Because, uh, you know, like in 2016, uh, on Forbes magazine, so they have this cover with uh, Jack Ma, the founder of Alibaba. Yeah. And uh, there's a tagline of the, 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 the Alibaba, the Jack Ma. It says, uh, his uh, uh, $20 billion empire is built on top of fix. It's not good. <laughs> it's not good, right? So, uh, then, you know, in 2017, uh, the Alibaba group is uh, using, trying to use the, the uh, blockchain technology to track the transfer of the, 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 the products on their platform. So to make sure uh, no uh, seller, you know, uh, so because sometimes the seller try to mix the real product and like fake product together and sell it. So in that case, it won't be noticed by the consumer direct immediately. Yeah. So because sometimes you get a real one, sometimes you get a fake one. So, so it's a, this is the strategy. So uh, then Alibaba, you know, trying to use the blockchain to make sure, okay, one product, one specific identification. So then and combine them uh, to mix them together and put to blockchain. So in that case, we can make sure this product is authentic, you know, and uh, it's, it's, it's a certi uh, certified by the, uh, by the blockchain. So this is what they do, and it's a very interesting use case. Yeah, and uh, yeah, that's actually that happened uh, to to <laughs> now uh, going out of uh, of topic. But actually, like um, when I was at the university studying, I used to have a uh, I used to sell on eBay, and uh, we used to buy from Alibaba, and I had exactly that problem. That sometimes I would just buy, let's say, an SD card, SanDisk. Uh, sometimes. I would uh, it would go through well and it would be the the original sometimes I wouldn't know I would get a fake one but I would sell it and then after a couple of weeks the customers would say hey you just you sold me something that was not uh, the the original brand and I was thinking that I did uh, buy the original but um so that it's a it's a real pain it's a problem and then, uh, that's why I think it's it's a super uh, good use case for the for the blockchain because uh, as you said you can put that in the ledger and then you can track it so yes uh so for, 
it's good for the merchants, good for the, the platforms like Alibaba, uh, and good for the, the consumers. So, yes. Um, so yeah, very, very interesting. Um, so let's, uh, let's now uh, jump to uh, Universal um, Labs, which was the, the next step that uh, you took. Um, can you tell us what Universal Labs is? Uh, okay, cool. So uh, for Universal Labs, we are creating the first decentralized personal cloud with blockchain technology. So uh, you may have this question, why I want to do this? Because I've tried something like intellectual property protection, supply chain management, now this personal cloud, why? So, uh, you know, like I have been in the industry for like several years, like four years since 2014. So I noticed this technology is a very cool blockchain. You know, it will, it will change a lot of our like daily life in the future. Uh, or, or it has already been changed some people's life, right? But it's, so everyone is trying to find out, find out the killer app. Everyone is trying to figure out what will be the killer app. Like for example, for internet, in 1993, the internet was not that good. You know, they, so it's very hard to use. Like for average consumers, they want to use the internet because you need to, you know, you need to do, do how to do the coding and how to do this command. Yeah, it's very hard. But in 1995, there's the first internet brother invented. So it changed the, the whole industry, right? So everyone want to have a, a domain. So I want to have a, I want a dot com and then they don't have a website because of the internet brother so uh we are so i'm thinking like for blockchain you know what will be the 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 the, the, the most important part of blockchain to have a massive adoption so because nowadays blockchain is hot everyone is talking about it but i don't think everyone have a good understanding of this technology or the potential of this technology but uh, do they need to have this is another question I guess for most of the users, they don't need to understand because for internet, we use that every day. My parents use it, my grandparents use it. But uh, I guess none of them can explain to me how, that, how does it work. I mean, what I mean how does it work is if I type in HTTP, HTTP uh, 3 triple uh, w dot google dot com, what happened with my computer? And how can I get uh, this page? Can you explain? No, it's hard because it's, yeah. it goes through seven layers from the physical layer to the application layer. Then you can get all this data. Uh, so, but uh, when you use it, you don't need to necessarily, it's not necessary for you to, to understand, okay, uh, how it works, you know, you don't need to. But for blockchain, why everyone trying to explain it to normal people, to, to, to explain to, to the average consumer? It's a problem. For most of my friends, like they are geeks. I, I was a geek and I'm a geek too now. So, they, they, when they do some, when they create some uh, application with blockchain, they always think, okay, you need to understand blockchain. Then you can get, get why my product is cool. Why my application is so cool. <laughs> because sometimes they, they have this moment. I'm, I'm, I'm creating something really cool. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm shocked by myself. You know, like a, like, yeah. It's, it's, so it's, yeah, that, that moment, I had that moment too. But sometimes why create a product and show it to people, like my parents, they say, huh, what's this? I, I don't understand. Again, well, what's the point of your, your, your application? <laughs> they have this question. Then I think, okay, maybe that's not the right way. Then after several years of trying, so I'm thinking for the future of blockchain industry and this is technology, for well, most of the developers and also companies, foundations, uh, projects, they need to focus on human. They need to focus on their audience, they're like, a, like, a, like an average users. We need a product that can open this market. If we can open this market, it will change, will totally change the, this industry. It won't just only about uh, tokens because like, you know, like for most of people, they hear, hear about the uh, blockchain because of uh, Bitcoin. And now they hear like, uh, and also like other altcoins, like so many coins now. So they trade these tokens. So they, okay, uh, they think this is the best application of blockchain. I don't think so. You know, just trading tokens is not the best application. We need something else. Yeah. So first, we need to have several criteria for this application. First, it's, it needs to be very easy to use. For, it's, it should not be a rocket science for average user. And the second one is uh, it needs to have some real value. Because I saw so many projects, they are 
the, the I can't explain. I, I can get, get there. Add, do you know why this thing has value? Why you why you don't just use a centralized system? You know, because I was the, I, I got I learned everything you know from my school universities about a centralized system, right? Like a database, central servers, cloud services. All these are centralized, and they 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 they, they work. You know, right? It's not mean. But why we need a decentralized one? I think most of our projects they need to explain, like, you know, have explain this clearly. Otherwise, why people want to use a decentralized service? So why? What's the point, right? And uh, the third one, it need to have a really good tokenomics. If if you don't have a token, it's okay. Like for some supply chain projects, they just use blockchain as a decentralized database, a distributed ledger. It's okay. It's totally fine. You don't need a token. But if you have a token, you need to make sure it works. Or it, mean, it make sure it's meaningful. Because for some, like I, 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 okay, for half of the blockchain projects, or the token projects, the token doesn't mean anything. It has no value inside the system. Why you create a token? Why just the, some, you, sometimes they just need like something like a credit system. That they, they create a token. Yeah. <laughs> I don't get the point, right? So that's why I think for Universal Labs and for our product, UB, Block, or UB, UB Box, you need to ex place like to explain all the three questions. You know, that's, you know, and, uh, and, and, and that's what, you know, like this is, a, we, want, we want to make sure the UB Box will first, it's designed and focus on the average consumer, like my parents, like my, even my grandparents can use it. Second one, it needs to reflect the benefits of a decentralized system. It has the, you know, why it's, it's meaningful. It, it, why it's decentralized, decentralization is meaningful. Mm -hmm. Third, the tokenomics should be, should be reasonable or should have value. So why you want to have, hold this token? Why? Uh, we want to give a, you know, good answer. So you're basically creating a, a network where people can, um, and this might be only one part of the, if you can explain more on this, but um, so you're creating a, a network where people can uh, basically give the um, computational power of uh, that idle computational power so other people can use it in a decentralized manner, like a decentralized uh, AWS or uh, Azure, uh, if I understand well. Okay, yeah, let me give yeah. you a uh, like, uh, more uh, detailed explanation of this, how it works. Okay, yeah. so uh, this, for this UB box, it has two functions, basic functions. The first one is uh, you can use it as a private, like a, like a private draw box, you know, like draw box we use every day, right? Mm -hmm. So, some, uh, so it's, you can upload your uh, digital contents, like your like, uh, photos, uh, music, you know, movies uh, to this, device, but it's private. Why is private? Because, so this is a hard disk, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, so for, for, the, for Dropbox, it's a service provided by the company and everyone share this service together. So the Dropbox company has a full control of your data. They have the full control of this service. Uh, and, uh, but for this one, you can think this is like a remote hard disk for you. And you, when you plug the Ethernet and connect the cable, and then you know it become your own uh, Dropbox. You can use it, and your family can use it. Nobody else can use it, right? So, so which means it has a full privacy, and also very secure compared with the centralized one. Because, for example, the iCloud. So we have, uh, so in 2016, like a lot of uh, movie stars, they got their account got hacked. And a lot of, uh, you know, like a leak of the, the, the naked photos, you know, yeah. that's not good, right? Because uh, it's, it's not like, it's, 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 it's Apple's fault, but uh, you know, like uh, it's very hard for a centralized system to be very secure. Because it's very vulnerable for all these attacks. You only have one point and all the hackers will attack this point. But for a decentralized network, the block, for example, for our UB network, so uh, it, it's 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 very hard for hackers to attack, you know, everyone, you know, you can attack maybe attack one machine or my one UB box, but you can't attack everyone. 
And also blockchain technology provide a different layer of in, uh, security to the system. So that's for the first, uh, the, the, that's one function. The other one is uh, this UB box can be a full node of our UB blockchain network. What I mean full node? Full node is like, a, like, a, like a, let me use the Bitcoin as an example. Like a lot of people buy this mining machine, trying to mine Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. All these mining machine plays as a role of the phone node. It, it becomes the, 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 the infrastructure of this blockchain network. So with our UB box, you can contribute your storage, you know, your storage to the network. So we use a consensus called a proof of storage. It's not a proof of uh, work, like a big home. So for proof of work, all computers, all, all phone nodes, they compete on computing power, right? But for us, they compete on storage. The more storage you provide to the, you contribute to the network, the more, the higher probability you get the, the, the reward. The reward is our token, your token. Ah, the token, you, the name, the, the token, the, the, name, the, the name of the token is your token. And uh, so, uh, you know, which means like, you know, uh, when you buy this UB box, you become a, a full node of our blockchain network. You connect with other UB box. And this automatically generate a, a new public blockchain. And on top of that, uh, we, can, we can develop decentralized applications. And also in, we can add some more protocols, like IPFS, to, to, you know, to, to expand the, the features, the functions of, the, you know, of this network. This is, a, you know, like a, like a, like a the, what is, you know, this is a UB box and uh, the two basic functions. And um, yeah, very interesting, uh, and Kira. And one thing, so as in every network, then you have like uh, the supply and the demand. And then what's the most difficult thing in, in every uh, network is to tackle like this kind of um, uh, chicken and egg problem. That you, you need more supply in this case to, uh, to uh, get more uh, demand and the other way around uh, as well. So what's your, what well, you kind of said it on one hand that uh, I guess for more people that buy the, uh, the device uh, for themselves to use it uh, to store their own data, uh, then that part of the supply grows. They have more uh, um, available storage to uh, push into the, the network. My, my question is on, um, on what are you planning to do on the demand side? From where do you think the demand for, the, uh, for the, that, uh, um, that storage would come from mainly from uh, 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 app developers, from bigger companies, from uh, individuals, and how, what's your strategy to tackle that problem? Okay, so uh, for storage, like, like, so we are now in the digital age, right? So uh, we, we generate a lot of digital contents every day. So if, like for normal user, they generate every day. So you, you have some, like, a, like a, you have some doc files from your work, you take photos every day, and you have uh, this, you know, like a music or the, the videos you want to keep there. So the, the demand increase, every, you know, every year, and from the normal users, and also from the enterprise too. So, so we generate a lot of digital contents every day. So then, you know, like the demand part from, from you know, both from the users, normal users, and also enterprise, they all have this increased demand. And for the supply, so uh, the reason we want to have this UV box and I have this uh, blockchain because we want this is like a like a like a for, for in the past in the past before the cloud you know like a, before we have this concept of cloud, so everyone trying to create their own server. I mean, create their own server means you need to buy this hardware and and plug in and mm -hmm. host you know, yourself. Then IBM think, okay, uh, I have, uh, you know, why, you know, uh, my, my maintenance guy need to come to my clients and to fix their problems. It's stupid. Why just the host at my place? And then we group together and become a cloud. You know, that's, that's the beginning of a cloud service, right? So, uh, and after that, like people think, okay, uh, why I want even want to have this, you know, like a, won't have my own service. Maybe I can just share, like use other people's, like, like because 
you know, like with internet and also I, I believe also blockchain, the people's you know communication and the share will be you know you know better or even increase because like sometimes you don't need to do it yourself. You just mean I need a, uh, some storage. It may mean I need to buy. I need to have it myself. Maybe I can borrow from other people. And this is. The, you know, like that, this is why I think it's the right timing to have this, this kind of product. Mm -hmm. And people already get used to it, to it like, a, like a Uber, right? We share cars and we also Airbnb, we share our, our, our apartments, right? So yeah, this is, uh, you know, like, a, like a, if we do this like 10 years ago, it won't be successful because for most people, they don't. Uh, it's very I don't I, I, I want to have a USB you know like a USB sticker that that's all I don't want something to share you know but now it's okay yeah nowadays the peer-to-peer -peer concept is more understood by, by people yes. um, one thing that I, I think I was uh, when I was reading the, um, uh, the white paper but I think it's uh, it's really uh, interesting it's the old WP protocol um, because um, maybe before we get into that we can talk about a bit more the uh, competition uh, landscape um, there are some uh, some uh, solutions out there that are also in the um, decentralized uh, world that are offering uh, storage like a uh, CF uh, file coin more like data uh, uh, decentralized databases like Blue Cell, for example, um, new ones uh, like um, Holochain that has also the combination with uh, with uh, a, a hardware, um, a Hypernet we have seen as well. So I, I guess like, how, how do you see um, um, the the competition and where does uh, Universal Labs uh, stand in in that uh, landscape? Yeah. So uh, this is a very good question. So I got this question a lot of times, you know, like from, uh, from, like from, uh, from different uh, people. So uh, first, I, I want to like uh, uh, mention again. So our product is more consumer focused, average user focused. We don't want to create just a geek, geeky product. It's so like for most of the projects you just mentioned, they are too geeky. They're cool technology, but not a good product. So like for, for, for why people like uh, Apple's product, like iPhone. Why iPhone is, like for average user, they may choose iPhone compared with Android you know, system because, because the, the better user experience, right? Better design. And, uh, and uh, you know, for me, uh, I use, you know, like for me, I, I think like because I, I'm a developer, so sometimes I use Android phone, but uh, it's too complicated even for me. So they have so many settings. Some settings I don't need it because I will never, you, you know, when I get an Android phone, I'm confused. Oh, uh, how can I change, you know, this? Oh, it's so complicated and very deep, go very deep to the system yeah. and then find, find this button to change it. Oh, it's <laughs> so but for every user, don't do, they don't want that. They want something direct, straightforward. Like Apple's product. Mm -hmm. So then for my competitors, I think most of them, the Android system, they, 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 they are too cool. They are too, not cool. I mean, like they are too technical. So for this one, we want to make sure it's not that technical. It's easy to use, very good design. And uh, so, and also like from, like, uh, like, uh, like from, uh, from this, from the design part, we want to use the, this called, uh, this is I learned from IDEO. Uh, IDEO, IDEO, the best design company. So the, 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 they, they have this philosophy, they call it human-centered design. So uh, this is why, you know, like, like for, for most of the, like, like, like a blockchain startups, foundation projects, they, they don't care. It's like a, they, 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 they just ignore this. I don't know why. So sometimes I, you know, like, a, sometimes when you compare with other projects, you, you need to mention, uh, TPS, you know, transaction per second. This is some, some buzzword everyone wants to use. But my TPS is more than 10,000. Wow, so I'm cool. You know, but for average user, they don't have you know idea. What, 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 what is TPS? Why higher TPS means something? It's, it's, yeah. 
<laughs> and sometimes it's, it's not even needed. In, in, uh, in, yeah, you're right. Um, so I think like, uh, yeah, to, I think this is a, an interesting topic to, to discuss. Sometimes, as in other things uh, in technology, you just see like more of the same, like just like one project coming up to the other one saying like it's better, it's faster, it's, uh, uh, and then you have the, pro the TPS uh, kind of uh, situations. Um, now we're seeing that a lot in, uh, in the, especially in the public blockchain uh, space, uh, project after project saying like, okay, uh, and then we just uh, starts to repeat itself when they say like, uh, <laughs> okay, Bitcoin, that's five TPS, uh, uh, Ether uh, around 14 to 20, and then yes. uh, the other ones, and then you have until like new ones now saying like a million or hundred million or whatever it is. Um, so I think it's interesting to take a, like you said, the, the um, look it from a bit from, a, from another perspective and see, uh, is that important? actually do the the really important thing is the is the users um so i, I think that's a it's a good uh, learning thing also for other projects but um um also I, i've talking to a lot of uh, of um uh, founders of projects and and researching a lot of different projects that's something that i, I usually come across that uh, it's even though the technology is very uh, impressive and it's very cutting edge um it is still geeky as you said and people not uh, are not gonna use it if they don't if they don't if they don't understand it first um so speaking of that so one thing for to make people use uh to become like more the 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 um, the ios people, uh, or the the apple product of the blockchain um as you mentioned something that uh, it's really important is, is the user experience that is easy to understand. And, and the other part that a lot of uh, blockchain projects, uh, because of being too technical, don't understand well is marketing. Uh, how important is uh, also to get uh, your product to not just uh, be very technically great, but also that people love it and, and also that uh, people know about it. So the marketing side of things. Um, so you already talked about the, the design that you're putting uh, a lot of time and effort in, in, the, in looking, in, in having a, a good uh, user interface and a user, uh, and a user experience. Um, what, what is your plan in, in terms of our marketing uh, um, universal labs? And, and for what yeah. Is, mm -hmm. yeah, if you can so add, for uh, marketing, uh, Yeah, so uh, for marketing, you know, like, uh, like uh, we use both the traditional marketing channels and also from our community because for blockchain project, it opens something new, right? So like a community. So it's, it's not like it's just a company, like, a, like, like you do the TV advertisement, you do online, uh, online advertisements, social media, and this kind of stuff. This is a traditional way. So also you can do like the community because so community is very important for a blockchain project. So they are like the co finance of your pro your, of your project. So like a, like a, this is something new we are trying. So because we have this product, so we want to make sure our community members can get it first. It's not yeah. from like a, definitely like a, like a, like, a, like a, uh, other people are very important, but we want to make sure our community first is satisfied because if they love they love your project, it's true love, you know. It's true love. So we, you start with the, the, the true love and uh, then they give you feedback and they want your product to be successful. They are like the, the, the target user, you know. If it, it's, it's not a community, it's not from the community. Normally they are like a secondary user, not the target user. So the, they, the target user very, very important. So they, if they hate your product or project, you want to be successful. So first, make sure they're happy. And then you learn from them and get better. And because for your community, they represent the rest of the people. So if you can have a strong community to support the, the project, the marketing is very natural because it's the best marketing is not like something you, you should. We, we, sometimes like a people like a think like a passive marketing. What is passive marketing? Passive marketing is something like a TV shows, like a TV advertisement. 
So you do an advertisement on TV, and I, I, I watch a TV show, and I, I saw your advertisement. It's passive. It's not good. It's, a, it's just like a, the, the transfer rate is very low. What is the, the, the good is, is, is they learn. They want to learn. They, they, they listen from other people. And uh, word by mouth. Then yeah, the they, mouth, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then trans, the transfer rate will be great. So this is our strategy for the marketing. And I, I'm, I'm very agree with you. So it's, marketing is very important. If you have a good product, good technology, but you can't, you know, touch the, your audience, it's, 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 not, it's, it's, it's good. It's not good. So like for a lot of Silicon Valley startup, they feel because of that. You need to, like, West Deep Jobs is so great. It's not just a, a good designer. It's, it's also the best, you know, seller. It's the best salesperson. <laughs> you think Valley, right? Yeah. <laughs> when they sell something, you want to buy. Exactly. Then, then, then you create like this kind of uh, the, the community, like hardcore uh, community members. Like you see nowadays also with other, um, like Tesla, for example, has the same uh, uh, kind of uh, community that are really love uh, the cars and then even pay before they, they come uh, to, uh, into production and then they'll support them. Uh, regardless and then they'll be very also that if there's something goes wrong they'll say it and they listen which is a uh, it creates like for if they wouldn't have a, a strong community as you said like um we, we wouldn't see a car a tesla car actually happening because they wouldn't have never paid beforehand uh, to create the uh, the actual production and that still comes uh, today that they, they help them to is the best marketing they can have instead of pouring billions into advertising. So uh, yeah, that's also very interesting also that, uh, that you have that uh, approach uh, as well. Um, I think like, well, we, we are moving uh, fast uh, into the, the last part of the, the interview. I think the one part that uh, we haven't discussed, and maybe you can, you can tell a bit more on the, uh, on the protocol, on the OWP um, protocol and because that's also something that these other projects that we just mentioned before have not uh, uh, included in the package as well. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, um, like, uh, like, uh, like, uh, so uh, before I explain what is the OWP uh, ownership protocol, uh, let me uh, ask something like uh, to to everyone. So, what is Bitcoin? So, can you show me your Bitcoin? No, you can't. Because there is no physical representative or digital representative of Bitcoin. So it's, it's just, a, it's for Bitcoin, it's about a digital ownership re recorded on the public ledger blockchain. This is Bitcoin. It's just a record on the blockchain, on the public ledger. So uh, why is this is important? Because ownership is very important on the internet. So ownership for a physical product, it's well defined. Like for me, I own this, it's mine. Mm -hmm. But uh, if it's on internet, I have a picture. It's hard I claim this mine because it's very easy to be copied and also it's very easy to be transferred. So, but uh, the invention of blockchain changes that. I have a deep faith in that because the reason I started ownership technology in 2015 and we do intellectual property protection is based on that. I have a deep faith in with blockchain technology. We may create a, a global DRM, digital rights management solution. So this kind of a solution is like when you download a, a, a music from iTunes, from Apple iTunes, you can't play other place, right? You can't, you, it's, you can't only play on the iTunes. And it's inside the closed system. Why they want to do that? Because they want to protect their IP. And so also this is, but like with blockchain technology, it's possible we create something like better than the iTunes solution, a, a global DRL. So how? First, with blockchain, we can have uh, this public ledger, and it can record all the digital contents ownership. So or when, when, when I create something, like I have a musician, I create a music, 
then I, I can register it on Bitcoin blockchain or on Ethereum blockchain. You know, all blockchains support this function. And uh, then I can transfer or trade this digital ownership with other people. But uh, the problem of the industry is nobody has standardized this part. So everyone, you know, they, they, they focus on blockchain, but they didn't focus on how to make this to be a global protocol. You know, why we, because only it's become a global protocol, it can benefit everyone. You know, and uh, like uh, if that happened, we, we, don't, we don't need any like a middleman. Like we don't need the iTunes. We don't need Apple. We, we don't need all these uh, producers. We just need the, the artist and their, and, you know, finds the audience. And with blockchain to combine them together. If I'm a musician, I create a music. I can sell it with my, all my audience with, on blockchain immediately. So yeah, this is the, something we want to achieve with old ownership protocol. And also one thing very important, you will upload a lot of our digital contents, our digital asset to the UB box. We need a way to protect your intellectual property. We need a way to protect your assets. How? With OWP. So there are several components of OWP that I just mentioned. We need a public ledger, right? It's UB blockchain network. And also we need to make sure you have an ID. Like because compared with the real world, the, the physical world, you have a, you have, you may, maybe you have a driver license, you have a national ID, a passport. It's okay in the real world. But on the online, how to identify it's you. When you claim something, the ownership of something, we need to make sure it's you. So like the Blockstack is providing some service, Civic is doing something like a blockchain based ID. So we may work with them to solve because this part we, we don't want to, you know, because there are several solutions for the, for the ID part. And then we use this OWP protocol to, 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 to let the, the, the people always confirm the ID. To and uh, also like, a, like a, when, when there is a digital contents, we will abstract the signature of these contents and combine the ID and the signature together and put, and uh, record it on the and record it on on the UB blockchain network. Once that done, it will generate a certificate for the for the for the for the for the for the user, and also a certificate for the for the whole blockchain network. Then it shows okay, this is my uh, music or my digital asset. Nobody else can you know can can copy it, can 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 steal it. So, and also there is a, another part called the ownership engine. Uh, what is ownership engine? Ownership engine is something to automatically compare the difference between different contents or different assets. So this is, you can treat it as a filter. This filter's function is to make sure no, you, you won't you know, claim the ownership twice. And also we want to make sure if someone uh, maliciously uh, change a little part of the digital asset or digital contents and then apply a game, we will detect it automatically. And uh, so, and also third, we, want, we don't want something uh, not good, like, like some, uh, some, uh, some uh, uh, criminal stuff or illegal stuff on, the, on our you know, network. Uh -huh. So ownership engine is, uh, is uh, the big the, the filter for, the, for, the, for this OWP protocol. And also, uh, we also have this market to you for you to trade your your digital contents, so you can trade the, the your photos, the music with other people. Other people can buy it with our token. This is the OWP protocol. Yeah, yeah, that, that gives it, uh, an interesting uh, utility as well for the token. Uh, interesting. So then, uh, if, if I understand well, then uh, it would be possible to create uh, um, uh, DApps decentralized apps on the on on the OWP protocol yes yes and uh, and also it's uh, when, when you create it on top of the uh, OWP protocol so uh, this step will automatically support the the the, the intellectual property uh, registration and also the transfer of the ownership automatically so with that you know maybe we can create something you know because uh, for the the better part of the the iOS system is not a the, the system itself, it's the Apple Store. 
all the developers create all kinds of uh, apps. Some apps really, you know, like all of, like it's very creative. So I guess with OWP yeah. protocol, maybe some developer can create something very creative too. Interesting. Yeah, that, that's very interesting because it, that it's just basically just uh, leaving the protocol out there for people to start creating. It. And, um, and then, yeah, you just know where it starts. So you never know where it's going to go and it, how big it could, because it's, it, then the next step, it's, it's them, the creators. So then that's very exciting. Um, now I think that we have covered like uh, almost um, everything. Uh, um, let's get into the, the, the last part more about the, now you are in, uh, in um, pre-sale, right? Uh, if I see on the website and then if we can talk a bit about the, um, um, the um, token economics and 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 now uh, and a bit, a bit of also about the uh, before we start with that maybe we can talk a bit about the roadmap uh, where are you at the at the moment and then for the next uh, quarters of uh, 2018 and then we can discuss the big long-term vision okay okay so uh let me uh let me tell you the share the 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 roadmap first okay mm -hmm. uh yeah so for the roadmap, so uh, we use the Chinese dynasty to name uh, the different stages of the, the roadmap the, for us. So uh, we are now at the Joe stage. So for this stage, we will, uh, so in this month, the first generation of the UV box, you know, you see from here, uh, will be ready for shipment. So if you pre-order this on our website and receive the confirmation email, so you uh, will receive your UB box uh, by the end of this month or early next month, uh, international shipment. So uh, and uh, for the next uh, the, the next stage, it will be chain chain stage. So it's very important. So we will have our testnet and mainnet ready. So uh, we will launch our like testnet first and then mainnet. And also by the same time, we may have the second version of the UB box, second generation. So it will support more features and functions. Okay. Very interesting. When did you say was there, were, uh, you planning the, the mainnet? Yeah, uh, by the end of this year. Oh yeah. So, it, so, uh, so yeah, for the October past that and uh, the uh, December, uh, the midnight. Cool. So that's very interesting. And um, so now you're on ten, in terms of the uh, um, tokenomics, you have a hard, Cap, if I understand, if I if I read well, was um, four thousand ether. Yeah, yeah, uh, forty thousand ether. Yeah. Forty thousand, sorry, forty thousand. Okay. Yeah, um, but we won't, yeah, we won't raise that much because this is just hard cap, you know. Like, uh, and uh, we uh, we think like, uh, you know, we uh, when we have enough, you know, raise enough fund for our future development, we will just uh, you know like uh, stop there. So, and also, we uh, have the total supply of our token will be uh, ten billion. 10 billion U token, and uh, also uh, we, uh, you know, we, we allow people to mine our token uh, with UB box, you know, so we kept, uh, we, we have uh, kept uh, some, you know, for that, like 20% for that, and also uh, we, uh, you know, like for our tokenomics, so it's very, we have a very different design from other projects. So first, the basic uh, function of the, you know, basic part of the, this token, the, you can use this token to uh, create a smart contract uh, uh, you know, like like Ether, like for Ethereum, the basic function. And also, uh, when I mentioned like the exchange of the digital ownership of the digital contents, so we you can use our token to do that. Like it will be the payments, and also we allow people to buy or trade their storage with our token. Uh, and also, uh, you know, like because this is a hard disk, a remote hard disk, a personal car. Sometimes you need a backup service. So this is not like a, like a, like a, like a, like a, like a, a Dropbox service or cloud service. Someone will back up for you. So you need to back up for yourself. So we have uh, two ways for you to back up. One, we will provide you a service to, pro to back up your, your, your storage. So it's backed up by Earth, but it won't, we won't touch your data. It will be fully encrypted. The second one is uh, to back up your data from, by other users. I mean like from other, like UB box. This is very similar to the IBFS. So uh, with all that, you know, like, but you need to pay your token to have that service. And uh, also, yeah, the last, but yeah, yeah, oh, when, yeah. When, I, 
one thing on, on that. So how are you planning to do the, the, so the, the data, let's say I want to back up my own data in, uh, would that be all that data in uh, one uh, user uh, um, or would be that uh, sharded in several uses? Yeah, so uh, we will also uh, just imagine like this is the, the data, okay? It's a block, okay? So we chop it down into several pieces mm -hmm. and put these pieces to different users. So yeah. no user have the full content, you know? Like then when you want to retrieve the back, you know, you collect all the, the, the pieces from the network and then get the, the block. Yeah, perfect. Now, that was the answer is, I was expecting, yeah, yeah. I'm and sure uh, the last, yeah, the last but not the least uh, use of the U token will be you can buy this UB box with our U token. Oh, you can buy it with the token as well. Yeah, so if you use our U token to buy, you will get discount. So if you use a US dollar, a fiat currency to buy, it's like, a, for example, it's a, a $200. But if you use U token, you maybe you, you just do pay 180. Okay, yeah. So there's another utility for the token, yeah. Yes, and also uh, we will burn all the token we collect from selling the UB box. Okay, perfect. So you have like a lower supply as well. Yes. Um, and uh, speaking of supply, for, with, uh, how much will be your uh, initial circulating supply? Uh, you mean the UB box, uh, the token, right? Yeah. So the initial uh, supply will be uh, four billion, four billion U token. Okay, so you have like yeah. Um, yeah. So from the from the um, total supply will be 10, 10 billion, and um, you will you will be having forty percent on that available for the for the, the public. Yes, and uh, let me share the distribution of the token. So uh, we will forty percent will be for the public, and fifteen percent will be kept for the team. And we have a four years of vesting schedule. The longest vesting schedule, uh, you know, you can, we can have four years. So we all make sure the whole team will dedicate four years, at least four years to the project to deliver our promise. And uh, also we have 20% uh, for the mining and 20% uh, for the foundation. So this part is, uh, is uh, we will use this part for like, uh, like investment and for uh, marketing and also other related stuff, you know, like uh, for that part. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and also the buyback, the, 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 for like a, like a uh, yeah, burn the U token, we need to have some token, yeah. And also, uh, and also like 5% of a partnership. We have already had some partners to exchange token with us, yeah. Interesting, interesting. And um, are you planning also to, uh, for partnerships for like the retailers to, to sell directly, or to sell your, uh, the device as well? Yes. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good, great way to grow the, the supply as well for, for the storage available. Um, yeah. I think like we have covered like almost uh, everything. And uh, Kida, I don't know if there's anything else that we didn't discuss that, that you would like to mention. But, uh, yeah, so if you are interested in, you know, like, like anyone, uh, which is really interesting in our project, please go to our website, ulabs.tech, and also follow us on Twitter or Telegram, join our Telegram group. So, uh, yeah, that's, I think uh, I should, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Perfect. I think that for me it has been like very uh, interesting uh, conversation. Um, and uh, as you said, like everyone that is listening to this and wants to um, maybe get involved in the uh, in the crowd sale or just learn more about the technology behind uh, uh, about uh, uh, Universal Lab, uh, just go to their website. I'll leave a link um, in the description as well. Uh, go to the the, um, the Telegram if you want to ask uh, any uh, questions uh, related. Um, and having said that, I think like I would like to thank you again, uh, uh, Kira, and uh, and I wish you the the best in, the, in this new adventure. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks for inviting me have uh, this interview. Uh, yeah, yeah, thank you, and uh, and um, thank you all everybody for listening to the to the interview with uh, Kira.
Um, and if you haven't subscribed yet to the, the channel, subscribe so you can get the, the uh, next uh, interviews. But hopefully, in a few months from now, we can have a second interview, uh, Kira, to see how everything is, uh, is uh, developing. Um, and I, after the, the whole um, token sale and then after the few first crazy months, uh, then uh, we, can, we can talk again and, and see how the project is doing. So um, thank you and uh, cheers, uh, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you.